In today's video we're going to be making our first frame by frame animation in Adobe Flash. And you can see that animation on your screen that we will be making. It's on repeat at the moment. Basically we've got a stick man playing a guitar and he has a rock thrown at him where he cuts himself open and some blood and guts fall out of him. It's quite simple and it's a very basic introduction to the world of animation. So what we'll do now is pop over to Flash and we're going to start by making ourselves a new Action Script 3 file. Okay. When you make a new Action Script 3 file, you'll end up with a white canvas on your page. Now in Flash, the canvas is known as the stage because this is where all the action takes place on our stage. So we will now be referring to this white canvas as the stage from here on in. If you'd like to zoom in a little bit, you can go up to the top right of your page and choose Fit in Window. That will just fit your stage in your window so you get a clearer view of what you're creating today. Like most Adobe programs, you've got your toolbar down the side of the page. You've got your Properties box just here. And we've got a few more panels just here that you can expand and see what's going on. Okay, Down the bottom, we've got a timeline and over time our animation will play and take place. Okay, so it will play through here. And we've also got a layers panel just over here that I'm going to rename to begin with. So double click on layer one and let's get started. We're going to call layer one our person. And we're going to draw a little stick man on the page with no arms. To start with, I'm going to grab my oval tool from my toolbox. I'll press the letter O for the shortcut. Choose a black stroke color and no fill color. And you want to have your stroke at about size 5. Okay, so set your stroke to size 5. And on your page, I just want you to draw a circle. Hold shift when you draw it. Okay, so there is our circle. If you grab your black arrow, you can try and pick this up and move it but you're going to get something a little bit different to what you're used to in Photoshop. You'll notice that the circle just starts deforming itself. Okay, so if you do need to move this circle at all, there's a bit of a trick to it. You need to click on it first to select that shape. Then you can pick it up and move it around. Okay, so Flash will take a little bit of getting used to as some of the features are a bit different to other programs we've used in the past. After we've drawn the head of our person, we're going to stick with that oval tool. And we're going to draw two little eyes. Try and get them the same size if you can. I'm holding shift when I do it. They're a little bit off. Actually, that might look kind of funny. So I might stick with two eyes of different sizes. The next thing we're going to do is grab the line tool from our toolbar. I'll press the letter N for the shortcut. I'm going to stick with a black stroke color at size 5. And holding shift, I'm just going to draw a straight line through this stick man's mouth. From there we're going to draw a body, so hold shift again, make sure it connects up. Draw a line straight down, holding shift, I'll draw in a leg. Holding shift, I'll draw another leg. It's about the same size. And finally I'm going to grab my paintbrush here, so it's the brush tool. Press the letter B. Oops, not the spray brush, the brush tool. Grab a fluoro colour, we're going to give this guy a bit of a mohawk so he looks like a rock star. With your brush tool you can go down the bottom here and change the size of your brush. You can also change the shape of your brush. Okay, so have a bit of a play with those. I'm just going to quickly draw in a mohawk. doesn't have to be perfect. You'll see that Flash smooths out the edges of your mohawk too as you draw this. Okay, That's a pretty cool looking haircut. We've almost got our rock star complete. If you want, one thing you could do with this guy's face, using your black arrow, your selection tool, can hover over the mouth here and when your mouse changes into a different cursor you know you can pick up the mouth and just give it a smile or if you want him to look a bit angry you could twist it that way and make him look a bit meaner okay so do what you want with the mouth I might make him look a little bit angry okay so there's my Rockstar's body and his cool little haircut I'm going to lock that layer into place for now because I don't want to edit that anymore. And down the bottom we're going to make a new layer. So that button in the bottom left hand corner. On layer 2 I want you to write the word guitar. 
we're going to draw a guitar for this guy. And to draw our guitar, we're going to need our rectangle tool. So pick that up. We'll press the letter R. I want you to choose a black stroke. And the stroke size should be size 2. I'm going to make it a bit skinnier, that stroke. The fill colour, whatever colour you want the guitar, I'm going to choose a bright pink. Now I want to make a rounded rectangle, not just um, a square pointy edged rectangle. We're going to have rounded corners. So down the bottom here, in the rectangle options, you might need to expand it out. I'm going to put size 20 for our rounded corners. That's each of the corners at around 20. And just draw on a rectangle. Okay. Once that's on, grab your black arrow, hover around the middle of this black stroke up the top, and you can drag it in. Okay, it's a bit of a wonky looking guitar, but it's better than nothing. Once you've got that selected by pressing on the guitar layer, that highlights everything, I want you to grab your free transform tool, which is the third tool in your toolbox. Then you can pick this up and give it a bit of a rotate. We're going to move it into position as if this guy is going to be playing the guitar. I've made mine a little bit big, so I'll make it a bit smaller. That's probably good enough. Okay, attached to a guitar, we've got the neck of the guitar. I might just use the line tool for this. Okay, I'm just going to use a black stroke with no fill color. And I'm not going to hold shift this time. I'm just going to draw out the neck of the guitar and draw it back in. Not entirely perfect, but close enough. Okay, so that's our very simple guitar. We're not going to worry about strings or anything like that. So I'm going to lock that guitar into place. We're going to add another layer now. And layer 3 is going to be renamed to arms. Okay, so what we're going to do is grab our line tool, bump our stroke back up to 5, and we're going to draw some arms on this fella. So I'll draw one going out there. That goes to the elbow, and then I'm going to swing it back in on top of the guitar, so it looks like he's going to be playing the guitar. Now he's going to have an abnormally large arm as it stretches up to reach the fretboard. And I'm just going to draw a little bit on the other side too, so it looks like he's actually, whoops, it looks like he's actually holding the fretboard. Okay, so there's our arms. That's probably going to do us for now. We can probably start animating this dude now to make him look like he's playing the guitar. And what we're going to do is pop down the bottom here to where it says guitar and person. These parts of the animation are not going to be animated. Remember the person is just the background there. I'm just turning him on and off so you can see. He's going to stand completely still. So I'm going to go across my timeline here to frame number 24, which is this one. You can see all the numbers that run along the top. So when I get to the 24th box, I'm going to click in it on the person layer. And once I'm there, I can right click and insert a frame. Or you can just press F5 for a shortcut. You'll see that it stretches out along my timeline to frame 24. The other things, the guitar and the arms, don't stretch out to frame 24 yet, so they've disappeared. So what we need to do with the guitar, we need to stretch it out all the way to frame 24. So let's click on frame 24 now of the guitar layer. And instead of right clicking and choosing insert frame, how about you try another one? Press F5 on your keyboard. That's a shortcut to bring in a blank frame just here. So that now stretches our timeline for the guitar all the way along to frame 24. The arms though are going to be a little bit different. The arms need to move. We need to have this arm going backwards and forwards as if he's strumming the guitar. Okay, so to do that, we've got a starting frame here where our arm starts in that position. Right next to it in frame 2, you need to click in that and press F6 on your keyboard. Once you've pressed F6, you'll see that all this is highlighted. We don't want all our arms highlighted, so just click off it onto your stage somewhere. Now we can hover over the hand of this guy and you'll see the mouse cursor change. We can actually pick up that arm and just move it a little bit. Only a little bit. Once we've done that we'll go to frame 3 and press F6. That brings our arms back up again. We click off onto the stage, hover over the arm and just drag it a little bit more. I'll do that one more time so I'm going to go to frame 4, press F6 
This puts a keyframe in. Click off onto the stage and move that arm out one more time. Okay, so he's pretty much at his full swing there, so we can swing the arm back in now. So I'm going to go to frame 5, press F6 on my keyboard to put a keyframe in, and pick up that arm and start dragging it back a little bit now. So I'm going to keep repeating that process. Press F6, click on the stage, move the arm in a little bit. Press F6, click on the stage, move the arm a little bit. I'll do it one more time now to get back to the starting position. Press F6, click on the stage, move the arm a little bit. Now that's a very tedious way to do animation, but back in the old days, before Flash and programs like that came along, this is how people used to do animation, and they actually used to draw it hand by hand on paper. You might have seen some flip books before where people flip through a book, and you can see animation taking place. Well, this is how it's done. Very tedious and very time consuming. Okay, If I go back to frame 1 in my timeline here and press enter, you get a quick view of how my animation is looking. It doesn't last very long, less than a second, but you can start to see his arm moving. Okay, now back in our timeline, the reason I've gone over to frame 24, because if you look carefully down the bottom here, or if I click on my stage and look over here, it says FPS 24. Our animation is running at 24 frames per second, so every 24 little boxes here, we know that that takes one second to play that part of the animation. So if I press enter, it takes one second to get from frame 1 up to frame 24. Okay, so what I want to do is get these frames all the way up to frame 24. So I'm just going to click on the first one, hold shift and click on the lock. Oops, that didn't work. I might have to click and drag actually and highlight those frames on the arms layer. I'm going to right click on them and copy those frames. I can now click in the next empty frame on the arms layer, right click and go paste frames. And I'll do the same again up here. I'll go to the next empty frame, right click, and paste frames. Okay, and that takes it all the way up to frame 24. So I'm going to go back to frame 1 now. Press enter. And now I've got one second of animation where a little dude is strumming the guitar nicely. If you press control enter, that will publish it. And you can see our little man playing his guitar over and over again. Okay, so that's looking pretty good at the moment. I'm going to pause the video here as I'm running out of time. My 15 minute time limit is almost up. But that's the start of our animation where we've got a little man playing the guitar. You can see each frame that I click through, his arm just moves a little bit. His body and guitar stay in the same place, but his arm just keeps moving. And that's the basics of frame by frame animation. In the second video, we're going to get a little bit more violence, as a lot of these stick figure animations are, and we're going to throw a rock at this bloke's head. So I'll pause the video now and come back and watch the second part to see how to finish this animation off.